interpreting. So um, click OK on that notification. All right. Um, what we did last time is we kind of got introduced to this idea of identities and using identities to verify new identities. So uh, these are useful tools in uh, improving these identities and then furthering uh, more and more proofs of these uh, kinds of statements. So we had our baseline Pythagorean identities and then we have our, our reciprocal identities uh, and then we have our even and odd identities. Uh, we're gonna combine those with some algebraic identities that we know or algebraic kind of expressions that we know how to simplify in order to simplify uh, complex expressions and write them in a, in a more simple way. So what we do is uh, we kind of treat each of these as an individual kind of like a variable. And we can simply just multiply this out, um, also called FOIL, we're gonna distribute that, we're gonna distribute this, and we're gonna get a new expression um, that has some sine times sine uh, in it, which would be sine squared. So when I multiply sine x times sine x, I get sine squared x, and that's how we write, uh, essentially, addition-wise of x quantity squared, we kind of shorthand to sine squared of x, which square uh, between this and the x. Uh, and then applying again, we get minus sine of x plus sine of x minus one. Uh, we notice the minus sine x and the sine x are essentially opposites to, add to zero. So we uh, cancel those and we get sine squared x minus one. <clears throat> We have an identity for uh, sine squared x. Well, we have kind of an identity for sine squared x. If we look back at our Pythagorean identities, sine squared x shows up in here. We can actually move this cosine squared x to the other side and do a little bit of simplification. So uh, we can replace this sine squared x with a one minus cosine squared x and then we still have the minus one at the end of the expression. So this sine squared x can be replaced with a one minus cosine squared. That's just a kind of a version of the Pythagorean identity that we can use to replace something. Now, why did I do that? Uh, because I, know, I knew that this one minus one was going to cancel out as well. So we have a positive one or a negative one, and those cancel out, and we get all the way down to negative cosine squared of x. So that is the, the simplest form um, for this expression that we started with, right? So those are equivalent. I guess we should make a note of that. Uh, these two are equivalent or equal to each other. Uh, and so why not write it in a simplified form if we can? So that's multiplying and then simplifying. Another thing we can do is we can factor uh, in order to simplify. So um, we, uh, in this case, I guess we're not simplifying yet, but we're, we're asked to factor these expressions. So if I see something like this, uh, first thing I notice is the, the sine squared theta and then the sine theta. This is essentially a quadratic. Right, this is a quadratic. Um, and we've used substitution before with expressions like this in section 3.2. We said, oh, we had some expression squared and then that same expression in the middle term and then a constant at the end. This is essentially in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So we said, uh, we're going to take this form and we're going to replace this with something called, uh, we're going to do a substitution to replace it with a U so that it looks nicer. So that when I do that U substitution, I end up with 2U squared plus 3U plus 1, right? That's what this expression becomes 
that expression, and then we're able to factor that. We're going to do something very, very similar here. We're going to notice that this is also an ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're going to do a bit of substitution here. Uh, I'm going to use u again, just because it's not a, a letter that's usually used in, in these expressions. So I'm going to say, uh, let u equal sine, uh, sine theta. Then our expression becomes two times u squared plus three u plus one. So it becomes the same thing as this, right? The only difference is that u is different. So at the end, after we factor, when we substitute back in, we're gonna remember to substitute back in for the u with whatever we replaced it in the beginning of the question. So we factor here, uh, this is a two u plus one and a u plus one factoring. And then uh, we don't wanna leave it in terms of u because there were no u's to begin with in the expression. So we're gonna replace those u's back with a uh, sine theta. So it'll be uh, parenthesis, two sine theta plus one, and then a sine theta plus one. All right, so our expression factored to that. I'll give you a second to type any questions you might have on this factoring process. So this idea of uh, being able to factor or multiply expressions and then simplify using the identities. So this, this idea of substitution factoring um, gives us an, yet another tool in proving identities, so verifying identities. So we're gonna get even more complex identities like this, and now we have more tools. We don't just have the, the, um, the three types of identities. We also have our tool of factoring and multiplying and algebraic, doing anything algebraic to, to simplify expressions. So verify the identity below. Um, uh, like we said before, we really want to work on the uh, more complicated side. So we will start with this left side and work on this side until we get it to look exactly like this right side here. So what do we notice first? Well, I noticed that since we just talked about factoring, that I have a sine squared minus a cosine squared in the numerator. Now that's not one of the, the identities that we had, but this is a difference of squares, right? We have a, a square minus a square. So we can actually factor that. Um, we can use like a little, little. Uh, I guess we don't necessarily need uh, substitution, but we have a sine of negative theta squared and a cosine of negative theta squared. So when I factor that, it's essentially in the form of a squared minus b squared. And we all know how that factors because we went over that in um, an earlier chapter, probably chapter three. Uh, this is a plus b, a minus b. So if I think about uh, sine of negative theta here as my a and cosine of negative theta as my b, I can I should be able to factor this numerator into a sine of negative theta plus cosine of negative theta. Let me use, oops, let me use brackets here. That times sine of negative theta minus cosine of negative theta. Right, and that's my numerator that I just factored. And my denominator, I don't wanna do anything with yet because I noticed that 
I have that same exact expression that's in the denominator. Now I have as a factor in the numerator, right? I have um, this bracket here is the same as my denominator. So we can fully cancel this with this expression. Note that I'm not canceling them one at a time, right? I'm not canceling this with this and this with this. I'm canceling this whole factor in the numerator with this whole factor in the denominator, right? You can't cancel just this sign of negative theta with that one. That's a big no-no. Okay, and then um, we don't uh, want to write the right side. Uh, we get, what do we have on the left side now? We have sine of negative theta plus cosine of negative theta. So it doesn't, it almost looks like the right side, except uh, there are some issues. Um, first of all, this is a plus in the middle and we have a minus in the middle here, but then also these are negative thetas and we want positive thetas. So we need to uh, convert those negative thetas to positive thetas. And how we will do that is um, I guess we should make a note of what we did here. From here to here, we factored just for your notes so you know what you did when you look at it later. <clears throat> and then how can I change these negative thetas to positive thetas? Which, which of the identities, because it's not factoring anymore, there's nothing left to factor. So which identity would we use to, to kind of get rid of those negatives in, on the thetas? Any ideas? Oh, you guys can talk to me. I should be able to hear you now. We can go back and look at the, the identities here. What would allow me to change those negative thetas to positive thetas? Which identities? Even odd. Even odd, yeah. We see that here, uh, cosine of negative theta can just be converted to cosine of theta because it's an even function, right? If I plug in negative theta, it doesn't matter. It's the same as plugging in positive theta because we have an even function. Whereas sine, when I plug in a negative theta into sine, that negative uh, appears in front of the sine because that's an odd function, right? So uh, we're gonna use these two identities specifically and we'll make a note of that here when after we use it. But sine of uh, negative theta is going to become a negative sine of theta. And cosine of negative theta will become cosine of theta. Right? And this here, uh, from this step to this step, is the even odd identities. And now we're almost to where we want to be. Last thing we have to do is we have to swap their positions. Uh, and we can do that because uh, addition and subtraction are commutative. So I can just take this and say, I'm gonna move you over here and you over here, and I'm gonna have cosine of theta minus sine of theta. And this is just commutative. property of addition and subtraction. <clears throat> and finally, I can bring this down and say, look, this is the same thing. Therefore, this original big fraction must be equal to this simplified expression. Okay, oh, well, that's a lot of space for that problem. Um, I wonder if there's a different way to do it. Maybe that's why they left all that space. It's possible that there are multiple ways to go about going from here to here. Uh, it's not always this way that I did it. Um, there are other identities we can use here, although I don't see them being as useful. For example, uh, sine squared 
can be replaced with um, one minus cosine squared theta or negative theta, I guess, in this case. Um, and then we can get, uh, we can kind of combine this cosine squared with this cosine squared. So there is another way to go about it, but then I don't know how you would simplify it with the denominator. That's why I didn't go in that direction. But uh, just as a heads up, if you go with an identity, you use an identity and then you seem to get stuck, that might mean that you need to backtrack and, and attempt to use a different identity uh, to be able to move forward. Okay, so that is that. Uh, 6.2 is not in the calendar as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, just a 6.1, we're finishing 6.1 and doing 6.3. So just as how we skipped uh, 5.2 in chapter five, we're also skipping 6.2. I've removed the XYZ homework for 6.2, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, there was also no videos for 6.2. So uh, we're skipping uh, just one set of identities here. Uh, which is the sum and difference identities. They're not super difficult, but we're just, we're skipping them uh, for the sake of time because of what happened in the beginning of the semester, I think. Uh, and so we won't see the sum and difference formulas. If you want to have a full arsenal of identities, then you can look over those ones on your own time, uh, just in case they come up in your everyday life. Uh, but we are going to do 6.3, which introduces uh, double angle formulas, which are these uh, in this box here. So these boxes are going to be very, very important to keep track of. You might want to uh, bookmark these pages or kind of fold the corners of these pages or something so you can get back to them easier. <clears throat> when you're doing the homework, these are going to be useful. Uh, during the exam, you're going to need to know these ones. So um, we have, uh, sorry, we have a, a formula for sine of two theta. That's why it's called a double angle formula because if we have uh, an angle that is double of another angle, we can have the angle by uh, using these formulas. This is um, not necessarily useful in a way that we use it in examples where we just prove identities with it, but I can think of a, a way that it is useful um, <clears throat> specifically for finding uh, I guess I was going to say for finding angles that are not on the unit circle nicely um, there are some, some uses in that sense anyway uh, we're going to use it we're going to use them to uh, kind of simplify the expressions or uh, solve triangles, essentially. So uh, note that there are three formulas for a cosine of two theta. The first one is just says cosine of two theta is the same thing as cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. Uh, it's pretty easy to go from this uh, first form to the other two forms. So if you only want to memorize the first form, and then know how to get to the other forms, that's a, a good thing to do. Um, how you get from uh, this first form of the formula, this expression, to this expression is uh, we convert everything to sine squared. So what we do is we take this cosine squared and we can replace it with one minus sine squared using the Pythagorean identities from chapter 6.1. And then you combine this sine squared with this sine squared, which makes two sine squareds. And so you get one minus two sine squared that way. All right, so that's this single replacement is how we get from the first form to the second form. And then you can imagine getting from the first form to the last form just requires changing this sine squared to one minus cosine squared. Because again, using the Pythagorean identity from 6.1, we can do that replacement. And then that'll get you to uh, this cosine squared will combine with this cosine squared, give you a two cosine squared. And so we end up in this um, third form of the cosine double angle formula. And finally, there are two uh, formulas for tangent two theta. 
we can use whichever one is more useful. Same thing with these. We just have three different forms and we can just use whichever one is more useful. So there may be a choice to be made when you're using these identities. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about how to choose which one. Uh, all right, let's see if we can work our way through this example here. Uh, given that tangent of theta is equal to negative three fourths and we're given that theta is in the second quadrant, find sine two theta, cosine two theta, and tangent two theta. <clears throat> Uh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> let's draw a triangle because as soon as I see this, uh, I want to draw a triangle in that specific quadrant. So we'll take our x and y axis here. We'll draw a triangle in the second quadrant. And we'll say that this is theta. Now, tangent of theta is equal to negative 3 fourths. I know that this is going to be 3, and this is going to be negative 4. I'm considering this as a negative side length uh, because we're going to the left from the uh, origin, and this as a positive side length because we're going up from the origin. So when I do that, I, I recognize that this is a uh, this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, a Pythagorean triple as it is. So that's going to be a hypotenuse of positive five. And now I can evaluate sine of two theta. Now I don't have a triangle for two theta, uh, which would uh, either be over here or over here. I don't really know uh, what theta is. Theta is this angle here. I know I put it in here, but uh, we can kind of use this reference angle for theta to, um, to kind of do these calculations. So um, th if this is theta, then um, two theta could be in the third quadrant or it could be in the fourth quadrant. Uh, we don't really know. So <clears throat> we want to have another way of calculating this, which is obviously going to be using the double angle formula. And we only have one double angle formula for sine of two theta. So we're going to convert that to two sine of theta times cosine of theta. And then uh, we can replace sine theta and cosine theta by their actual values from the triangle, right? If this is my theta here, uh, then sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 3 fifths. And cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's negative 4 over 5. And so we multiply these. Over here, uh, we multiply, we simplify. Um, two times three times four is 24. So we end up with a negative 24 over five. Sorry, not five. Uh, 24 over 25. I'm trying to figure out why uh, sine was bigger than one. That doesn't really make any sense. So that's my sine two theta, and as for cosine of two theta, you can use uh, pretty much any of these three uh, forms here because we have the whole triangle for theta. So feel free to use any form you want there and then plug in your um, ratios for sine or cosine. And then same thing for tangent, so tangent, two theta, you can use either, uh, well, actually you can't, uh, you, you could use either one of these. Uh, notice that this one uses sine of two theta and cosine of two theta. And normally we wouldn't have those, but since we're finding cosine of two theta, uh, sine of two theta and cosine of two theta, we will have them in the answers. So you could just use this first form using your answers from the uh, sine two theta and cosine two theta, or you can use uh, the second form where we have uh, tangent of theta and we plug that into both of these to simplify and find tangent of two theta. Are there any questions on that one? I'm gonna let you guys finish that one. Um, 
because the identities are right here. I, I think you guys can uh, plug those in and then use the triangle to figure out what the answer is going to be there. Are there any questions? All right. Uh, we can also use these double angle formulas to verify identities. Um, this is essentially what we've been doing with verifying identities. We just have new formulas to use as tools, right? So uh, looking at this, um, both sides seem to be kind of complex. Um, but since we're trying to use double angle formulas, I would suggest starting with this one. I'm gonna let you guys work on these ones as well. Um, but I would suggest starting with this one and replace using the double angle formula. Double angle formula. Use the double angle formula and see if you can work on this left side uh, until you get it to look like this right side. Um, is that going to be easy? Let's actually look at this because this one's interesting. Uh, when I use the double angle formula for sine two theta, I just get one plus uh, two sine theta cosine theta. And then is there anything I can do with that. Hmm. Maybe not. I kind of feel uh, stuck when I get here because I don't see anything else we can do with that. So uh, instead of doing that, this is what I was talking about earlier. You may start and then not know how to get. So essentially I'm trying to get from here, do some more things to it and essentially end up on this side. I don't know how we're gonna get to this right side from this left side. So that, I don't I don't like the way that went. So I'm actually gonna change gears and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna work on this right side here. And I have a bit more that I can do with the right side because we have an expression that's being squared. We can actually multiply that out. Right and see and, and complicate the expression a little bit more to then simplify going forward. So uh, this is essentially a sine theta plus cosine theta times another sine theta plus cosine theta. So we'll multiply that out, we'll foil that out and get sine squared theta plus uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get one uh, sine times cosine and another cosine times sine. Those are the same thing. So I'm gonna combine them into a two sine theta cosine theta. And then finally a cosine squared theta. <clears throat> so this is just multiply to get from that first step to the second step. And now I kind of see something that I saw when I uh, started working on the left side. Remember when I when I wrote this as a, uh, when I used the double angle formula here, it was uh, two sine theta cosine theta, right? That actually shows up in here, which is nice. So I know that I want to keep this because it is going to turn into sine of two theta because that's what the identity is, which means I don't really want to mess with this one. Uh, I want to keep this, uh, but I do want to do something with the sine squared theta plus the cosine squared theta. Who can tell me what we can do with the sine squared and the cosine squared? What is that sine squared plus cosine squared? What identity is that? Or what identity can I use? Pythagorean theorem? Uh, yeah, Pythagorean part? identity, good. I'm just gonna write Pythagorean. Um, sine squared plus cosine squared equal to one is the Pythagorean identity. So I'm gonna replace that with a one. 
And then I still have my two sine theta, cosine theta, which uh, on the next step, we'll be able to replace this, this is a double angle. of sine two theta, right? That's what that looks like. So I can replace that so that I get one, my, uh, one plus sine of two theta, which I can then bring down the left side and say, that's the same thing. And so we're done. So verify just means uh, work on one side until you get it to look exactly like the other side. So then uh, you guys can work your way through this next one. Uh, and then um, you can work on this one as well. Solve for sine squared. That shouldn't be too hard. Just get sine squared by itself here. Uh, and then we uh, end up, when you do that, when you do this last example, uh, 6.3.4, you should essentially find the uh the reduction formula, which we'll talk about in a second, the reduction formula for sine squared. What the reduction formulas are is um, we want to be able to go from uh, squares, so sine squared, cosine squared, and tangent squared by themselves to uh, a cosine uh, not squared expression. Now, in the process, we go from a sine squared theta to an expression involving a two theta, but we've essentially gotten rid of the, the extra exponents that we started with, right? So reduction refers to the reduction of exponents, reduction of exponents, right? So we, we have formulas for sine squared, cosine squared, and tangent squared, so that we no longer have those exponents or we reduce the exponents from two to one. Uh, and in the process, we may end up with some double angles. We end up with cosine always, apparently. That's what the, the reductions formulas say. Um, so these are not, we don't necessarily derive all of them. This just shows you where they come from, where the first one comes from. The other ones also all come from uh, double angle formulas. Uh, but these are just more uh, essentially formulas that we can use to prove more identities, but we're going to stop there. We don't have any examples on that one. Um, maybe we will, and we will use them uh, in section six point four. Maybe. All right. Uh, you have a few examples to do in the workbook. Uh, I think I have a worksheet as well. Let me 